and welcome to this wonderful conversation we're about to have with Naiza Khan, um, an artist from Pakistan. And for context, uh, the South Asia journal issue of SRHM, which I'm co-editing with Sundri Ravindran, um, has featured Naiza's work on the cover. So I'm Sapna Desai, I'm a trustee of the journal and longtime affiliate of the journal, including guest editing the South Asia issue. And we are very fortunate to have had Naiza both agree to have us feature her work on the cover and engage with us on a conversation about her work. So the work we're featuring um, is called The Suit of Armor of the Rani of Jansi. And it is about, oh, sorry, armor suit for Rani of Jansi. Sorry, Naiza. Um, and I wanted to first ask you, Naiza, about you know, what you were thinking when we looked at the work, we immediately saw images of the female body and about identity. But we'd like to hear from you both your thought process behind it, um, as well as the actual artistic process. Thank you very much, Sapna. It's, it's great to be here and um, talk about the work and, and, and connect it um, with what you're doing. So um, with the armor suit for the Rani of Jhansi, I was particularly interested in, in the notion of female heroism. And um, this was kind of something that was important in running through my work as, a, as an idea, maybe something abstract, but also very real because we think about so many forms of female resistance um, in contemporary uh, history. But I was also thinking about historical figures. Um, and I felt that um, there was a lot written about uh, the biographies of say jo Joan of Arc or um, uh, Queen Bodicea, but I felt that I wanted to explore um, this notion through a sort of South Asian context. And so this particular work came out, um, of course, you know that the Rani of Jhansi fought the British uh, colonial forces in the Indian Mutiny in 1857. And so this, uh, you know, I was curious about what was this woman, what was her, you know, what was her life? Uh, what, what, what did she wear? And so, you know, this, this work developed out of this um, idea to explore female attire and really think about how attire becomes a symbol of power, a symbol of sensuality as well, of femininity. And so um, I guess, um, you know, what I was thinking about were ideas of, um, of, of, of strength, but also of beauty. Um, and so I had been working with steel, galvanized steel, and I'd done some drawings as well. You know, all of this armor work proceeds with about 10 years of drawing um, the female body, not in terms of the sculptures that I was going to make, but just exploring ideas of, of, of uh, sensuality, of, of strength and, 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 and identity as well. So um, I, I, the female body for me was very much about, you know, how do I see it within the larger social space and, and in society, especially in South Asia. So I'd been working with armor and material and leather, and um, I started thinking about um, this relationship between very hard steel and also the folds of cloth that, you know, would, would obviously envelop the body. And this is how um, the piece developed. Uh, I wanted to build in these uh, contradictions of, of something which is very soft and then something which is very kind of... Um, hard and, and, and protective. And I think that brings into ideas um, around the female body and, and around the Rani of Chansi, which is this kind of sense of sensu this idea of sensuality, um, but also of strength and identity. Um, so I could go on and on <laughs> talking about this particular piece, but it, it was really important for me through the feathers, through the feathers at the back, you see, um, you, when you feel, when you touch the feathers at the back, you feel these really tiny spikes coming out from the spine. And so that sort of sense of, um, yeah, that sense of unexpected, like danger perhaps within the, the softness of the feathers, you know, those sorts of physical sensations were, were built into the construction of the work. Thank you. That's really interesting for us to now imagine the work that way through its process. So Naiza, you uh, exhibit all over the world, the Venice Biennale to the Kochi Biennale here in India, for example. And I think very different types of audiences probably engage with your work. And 
Similarly, the journal, I mean, we, especially this issue, but in general, are very committed to ensuring that different voices are engaging with, you know, both a local audience as well as a global. So in your own work, um, do you find the imagery, the perception of it changes? Are there preconceived notions of what, you know, art of the body of the female body should look like? Are there conformities you're challenging? I mean, what is your sense of that um, sort of engagement? I mean, from, from a very a specific point of view, uh, the female body has been a site of contestation, you know, across art historical representation for, for centuries. Um, when you look at the Venus or, I, you know, images of the Odalisque, you have a certain kind of stereotyping and a certain kind of idealization, which, um, you know, artists have, have worked with and worked against. So in terms of my own artistic practice, I, I really feel I have a role to play in this process of, in a sense, subverting preconceived ideas of, of that sort of idealization, that kind of conformity, and also challenging the structures um, which, which are often defined in a patriarchal society. I mean, you know, we, we as women are defined, so is the art of women defined and also the body the female body defines. So, you know, it sort of stretches through all of these uh, spheres of, um, of, of practice that, that you're doing and that I'm doing, I feel. Um, so I, I feel that, um, you know, it's been important for me to uh, work with resisting these boundaries and pushing, um, pushing that idea of what the female body, how it's conceived in the popular imagination, how it's conceived, um, you know, whether it's in Bollywood films or, um, you know, how you can break those those structures, um, which which sort of define from the outside, um, and and try to think about working from the inside and think about personal experience as a, as a way to to explore those um, subjectivities. I don't know if I've answered your question. <laughs> No, it does. And it speaks a lot to even research methods, to be honest, and the idea of, you know, ensuring that the lived experience, whether it be of the activist or the individual, is also brought forth, which often in certain types of methodologies um, isn't. And something the journal really tries to ensure is that we have a, a mix of perspectives. So both from the individual, the lived experience, essentially, as well as you know, larger macro trends or analyses, for example. And that, yeah. you know, it sort of makes me also wonder about the different reactions probably to the work in different, from different audiences. And something we thought about a lot when we saw the image was it also challenged the idea of what South Asian should look like. Um, just as we want the voices that come out speaking about issues in the region, sexual and reproductive health issues, not be the same that we've heard, but also to hear from others. And I don't know if that resonates with you at all in terms of challenging just even perceptions of what it should look like from the region. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it definitely resonates. I mean, as an artist as well, um, you know, there's often, it's, it can often be very prescriptive in terms of, you know, what kind of art is being generated from this particular, uh, um, you know, terrain and, and, um, the context that we live in in South Asia is so it's so rich and um, you know kind of uh, multi-sensory and 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 there's so many things that we're negotiating all the time. But I think there's certainly a lot of sense of like this is how we perceive you and this is what you need to produce for us. So there's that kind of um, relationship is is a is a real problem for visual artists like myself and others. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, that's... So I, I think, um, you know, I think that um, um, non-art contexts are really important for me as an artist. And I think that more and more art and non-art contexts are kind of more intertwined. Um, I think about, uh, you know, how culture in its broadest sense is, is very much about freedom. It's about cultural practice on different levels. And it's, it's something that engages with society. So in that sense, I think, um, you know, if you don't um, have um, a very, you know, fluid relationship in terms of how society is changing and how you're developing your work, you sort of remain in a static um, 
kind of monoculture kind of space. Um, and also, it's also about dissemination and distribution of knowledge, right? I mean, how do you, what kinds of tools do you use to, to teach a wider audience? Um, you know, you, you work through academic um, processes and I work through a visual process. And I think um, I reach a different audience perhaps, but, you know, we're talking about overlapping um, sort of, um, yeah, overlapping experiences, I guess. Um, and um, I, I think for me personally, art is very much about, you know, language that transcends class and gender and religion. So in that sense, it's, it's very, um, it's, I feel very sort of, um, I feel that it, it's a very important way to communicate what I'm, what I'm thinking about. And, uh, you know, in a sense, democratize the kind of idea of how you relate to society as, as a woman. You know, it's interesting you say that because, um, you know, the journal's inception in a way, and you can see at our own tagline is it's more than a journal because we, we aim to reach wider audiences um, through initially through dissemination of research, but also engaging people in different types of discussion. And that brought us to the idea of engaging more with art and artists in this way. And of course, there is a role for art and society that gets articulated in some ways. I mean, I, I think less so with the relationship with research, but because you also engage in research, um, how do you see that evolving as you, your own work kind of evolves in terms of that engagement between your work and whether it be broader um, communities or society as a whole in terms of your writing? Um, uh, the word research is, is uh... It's a very fluid word for me, and um, it's not often used with artistic practice, um, although it is more and more. Um, uh, visual research, if you think about it in terms of visual research, um, I feel there's a very important role that uh, that process plays for me because I think that, um, you know, we absorb a lot of things through it, engaging with whether it's communities or people or um, the city. Um, and a wider kind of popular culture. So I, I feel for me, it becomes a way to, um, to, to gather information, uh, to think about ideas and experiences which are outside myself as well, that other women experience. Um, and also to, um, you know, to kind of be experimental as well in terms of more interdisciplinary kind of um, practices so that there's a kind of, um, I, I think just a, a sense of, um, uh, you know, get, get, not being in your own comfort zone all the time. I think that's a very important process for me too. I think if I feel too much that I'm in a comfort zone, it sort of bothers me because I feel I'm becoming insular. So I try to kind of um, break away from that sometimes and, you know, step out, outside that zone in order to in, in order to access, you know, other kinds of um, kind of knowledge, other kinds of um, practices. I, I work um, with artisans and, you know, I think all of that knowledge pool filters and moves into my work in different yeah. ways. And I, I think also this hierarchy of the artist is a, becomes a problem. We all suffer from it, but, um, you know, when you work with other people, you realize you're one part of the wheel. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's, a, that's a healthy way to think about practice for me. That uh, encapsulates, I think, a lot of our thinking as well about the role of the researcher. So thank you. I mean, I think the, the parallels in thinking are, to me, quite incredible. Uh, and I think it's, again, to me, illustrates why we want to engage with artists like yourself and hope that you also engage with the type of work and voices that we're trying to um, bring out from the region. So with that, Liza, I just wanted to thank you very much. This I learned a lot, and I hope um, those of you watching can learn much more about Liza's work. It's obviously very well um, represented across the world, but now also with the journal. So thank you so much, Liza, and uh, we look forward to continuing to engage with you. Thank you so much, Sapna. It's been a pleasure. Same.